So what is up guys, I am 63Z and I'm back here today. So the beta for Halo Wars 2 has been, go has been going for the past 5 days. It has got another 6 days left. If you want to get in on it, get in on it now. Get in on it before it finishes on the 30th of January. I believe it's the 30th of January, so the 30th or the 31st. But it's been going for 5 days now. I've been playing the shit out of it. I've already played about 4 or 5 sessions. I've recorded one of them and we had a really good time playing it. Uh, that will be coming out. Once he gives me his audio, so you can have both my talking side of it and his, which should come out pretty freaking soon. There's some gameplays in there that I want you guys to see as well, because we did really well. But what I'm going to be talking about here is what is Halo Wars 2 Blitz Mode. Blitz Mode is essentially a card game. It is essentially a card game based around the Halo world. You're, from what we've seen so far in the game, there's been one map and six people. You have three banished team leaders as well as three UNSC team leaders. You have Captain Cutter as of the original Halo Wars. You have Isabel, an AI-based player. You also have Cap, um, uh, Professor Anders, I believe it is. Professor Anders, who is one of my personal favorites. She's my top two. I can't decide which is my favorite, but definitely top two. Then in banished leaders, you have the Shipmaster, which is an elite. You have... Decimus, which has a lot of vampire-based abilities, and he is a brute, as well as you have Atriox, who is my second in the top, like, two. So I can't decide between Atriox and Professor Anders. But in saying that, each of them have their own special units. I haven't gotten the special units for Atriox and Decimus. I have the special units for every other person. I have the Elite Honor Guard for Shipmaster. I have Jerome. Alice, and the, th the other Spartan, I can't remember the name, but I'm pretty sure that's the one that Professor Anders has too, so it's pretty sad. The game is based on a card game, so you have four cards in your hands at all times. You can cycle through them by pressing X, I'll be, I'm talking about Xbox here, not PC, so you can cycle through them by pressing X, or you can play them. You have as, as of the first one, you also have Energy. And you can collect energy drops. They aren't actual energy you just gain. They are energy multipliers. So if you get one, you're going to be getting that. And it's going to be multiplying how much energy you get per second. So if you go for like three of the energy drops, your multiplier is going to be about two-ish, maybe two in a bit. Um, now, you can have a, a hand of about, what is it? Like 10 or 12 cards, I think it is something like that. Uh, the deck has that many. You can have unlimited of these cards. Unlimited. Um, there is also super special abilities. Uh, all the um, UNSC people have the Condor Strike. And all of the Banished Leaders have the Scarab Super Unit. Um, now the games are registered for 12 minutes long. They don't always take that long. In fact, if you really bully the shit out of them. Anyway, if you try really hard, you can bully the shit out of them. You can bully the shit out of them, which essentially is you just beat them hard, hard and fast, which can take anywhere from like two minutes, because I think that's the max amount of time. Yeah, about two minutes is the max amount of time, and then you, like, the short, shortest amount of time you can actually beat someone, because you've got to get to 200 points. And I usually have my games ended around four minutes to about eight minutes. I don't usually go to full time, but the times I have gone to full time will be in the videos coming up, because they are freaking intense. Um, the whole session, I got a fair few Blitz cards, so I'm keeping them in. I'm going to put them into just one separate video. I'm also tempted for the rest of the beta to just record every single pack open I get, so you can see what they are. I'll be recording another session of the Halo game today, uh, probably with Matt as well. No, actually, we'll be with Matt because I'm not even playing it with Matt. I'll get him to record his audio again, uh, so you have a second set that I can use. Make another game. He'll give it all to me tonight, and we, I can edit it tomorrow morning before I head to work for you guys. I, when I play with Matt, Matt is is usually Atriox, or he's been Anders, or Isabel. Those are his three people that he tends to use a fair bit. What I'm going to do is going to run you through each person in particular. Uh, so you start off with Cutter. Uh, he has essentially what most people, like most of the UNSC, have. He has certain special. I don't. I haven't gotten all the special units, but with every pack open, uh, for these, I'm going to use um, my veteran Cyclops for example. I love them to bits. For every time I get a veteran Cyclops in a in a card drop, it levels up the card. And I don't know what the leveling up does. If it makes the units stronger, more health, 
not too sure. I haven't really been told much on it, but it basically levels off your cards. I don't know what the max level for cards is. I'm at level six for myself. I've seen people up at level nine, so I'm thinking maybe 10 is the maximum you can get to. It's going to take a lot of effort to get that high, but Carter uses the Spartan Jerome as his physical spawning unit that isn't a, like a superpower, like the Condor super unit, which is a fucking huge, 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 huge ship. It comes in and it really screws you over. Uh, they Both the Scarab and the Condor have a huge amount of health, are very hard to kill, very, very, very hard to kill. Your best chance when they call something in like that, unless you've got a fuck ton of units there, uh, especially for the Condor strike, like you have a lot of Reavers or you have a lot of Wolverines, your best chance is tactically retreating, waiting for it to die out, and then using all your troops to come back in and retake with your teammate. I tend to only play 2v2 or 1v1, because I don't have a third person I really play with that much uh, for these kinds of games. I have been bullying people on like the normal version. What is this? I bully people on the solo games. I'm really sorry for those people that I did, but it was quite fun. Uh, when you lose, you really hate the fact that you've lost, because it's such an addictive game when you're winning. When you're losing, it's just you take it personally. Me and Matt actually had a fight at one point from us losing on the first or the second night we were playing. Um, he had called me the word that I hate the most, which is the C word. Uh, the C word. And we had a fight all about that like for the next like three or four hours afterwards. And we eventually just got over it. But it's, it's addictive, but it's infuriating when you lose. Uh, you got Anders who is a sent who specializes in sentinel units uh her close air support is actually um protective uh, it's, it's called an arc defense which spawn in up to 12 sentinels and i think that's what happens when you level up that card for the moment i think mine only spawns in three or four when i've leveled it up really really high i think it will spawn in that many sentinels I'm not too sure but i haven't really paid attention to how many it spawns in i just spawns in i just kind of pop it there go back to something else and it kind of just comes up again later on and I just kind of noticed that there's some there. Um, then you got Isabel who's obviously the AI player. I don't really play much of her to know really what she specializes in really but she's definitely not the best that she could be. Um, one of the most annoying units that the UNSC can get is a camouflaged Kodiak. You pop that up between B and C and it just constantly fires and fires and fires. And unless you have a veteran Cyclops, a Nightingale, or another kind of unit that uncloaks um, cloaked units like an Engineer or something like that, or whatever the UNSC kind of, um, the banished people use, it's hard to kill them because they take so long to die. They cloak so fast and they constantly go between cloaking and non-cloaking once they've been seen. So it's very difficult to try and keep them down. Best shot when you have that happen is use Cyclopses. Cyclops or Hunters. Hunters and Cyclopses are made to destroy the the like the vehicles, essentially. You start off on either side of the map. There is only one map so far. Uh, it has up to three spawn points. There's, from the colors that you've been given from in two-player, it's red and yellow, blue and light blue. Uh, there's an A point up the top. Then there's B here. Then there's a nice little... There's a nice little divider here, and then there's C down the bottom. It's easier to have A and B than it is to have B and C, but C is very secluded, so as long as you have the middle part um, between B and C, it's quite easy to rotate between them, especially if you have something that can like jump pack roots. They really easily go between spots. What I found is really good to have, if I'm holding A, I instantly go for A anyway. I go for the drop that comes initially at the spawn or up the top left, and I hold A while Matt takes B, and then I rotate down after he's struggling with B, because they're all just focusing on B, because I've got A. They're not going to try and come at A when they're already attacking B. So I've took, taken A, and I just rotate my troops down. But what I do is I leave Cyclopses on the ledge just above A, because Cyclopses, they don't have a lot of health, but they do a lot of damage, especially to, um, obviously, the machinery. Then if... I know that they're kind of come up me, kind of come at me with a full force. I put Wolverines up on that ledge with them. Um, if I know they're not going to come at me with a full force and they're kind of straggling around, I'll have Wolverines down on the platform, either to the very over to the more the side that I spawn or towards the center. So that way they're kind of out of the way and they're still doing damage and getting 
like kills, but they're not taking damage. I tend to make sure I have at least two Nightingales now. I didn't like them at first because I was like, what the fuck are the point of these things? I didn't think they were healers, but they do heal your people. They're really good to have and worth using. They're cheap, they're easy, they're nice. If you know how to use them, especially with the Scarab Super Unit, it works so well. Because I'll show footage right now. I was basically playing with Matt and they had spawned like two scarabs essentially in a row and I had my nightingales but with, with the, the nightingales ability is to shoot down a smoke and although it puts the person you put in smoke in cover they can't see so they can't shoot you can either keep your people safe a bit longer while you wait for maybe to save up enough money for a super unit but in saying that you can also reverse that and if they get a super unit you can cloak their super unit and they can't see shit they can't attack you and they won't be able to move out of it unless they get told to move out of it. And that's not usually the first thing you try and focus on when you put it in. You usually summon it, let it play, let it just roam around and kill the shit out of anything that really happens. I just kept banging this one scarab with it and then banging the other scarab with it. I only needed to do it once for each. And they both died fairly easily because of that. Which works really... Because it's so big you can still shoot at it. Um, but it's the thing. They didn't die from being shot. Because a condor and a scarab, they die after a certain period of time. They don't stay until they're dead. They die out. Otherwise, they'd be really overpowered. They die out. So the point of that is to basically take away their time so they're not being used for them to die out sooner. Now, something that's really, really good, um, they might decide to nerf it a bit, but I don't think they should. It's called the blister back. They're better off being set down, a lot like the Kodiak. They're better being set down rather than in their mobile usage, because they do so much damage. You have three of them between A and B, or um, two of them between B and C, they will just destroy everything. And unless you take care of them, you're going to get fucked over by them. It's as simple as that. When I play with Matt, it's happened a couple of times. Um, we've been kicked out of the game for no reason at all. I've been connected to the internet. I've had a good connection. I've just been kicked out of the game. I don't know why, and it's just frustrating it's frustrating as hell um they do need to fix that as well as the shadowing when you spawn an arc defense which is the sentinels that spawn up the shadowing does something with the game and it makes the screen turn like have shades of black just spinning in the area it's so broken in that form um although i don't think the condor and the scarab need to be toned down actually no, the condor needs to be toned down because you can't counteract that with like a nightingale you essentially if you don't have wolverines or reavers there you're screwed from a condor at least you can kind of counteract a scarab with like a bunch of cyclopses some tanks or a nightingale with the freaking condor half of the ground units don't really shoot up anyway like hunters and cyclopses they don't shoot upwards so you're relying purely on wolverines and reavers when it comes to playing the game my tips and my tricks for when i play is essentially have your lowest like energy units like a jackrabbit, marines, grunts, um, I wouldn't say ghosts, but you can use ghosts if you want, or you can use the um, the fucking the choppers. They're another one. You set them to where energies just spawn. You set them as close as you can to where they drop, and you just leave those units there. The whole game, they're going to be killing those drops as soon as possible, upping your multiplier as soon as possible as well. You're best off having that for as many places as possible to up that as fast as you can. Because the more you have that going up, the sooner you're going to be able to get all of your shit. You're going to be able to spawn stuff faster, and you can use those super units more often. And you don't have to worry about waiting and waiting to save up. Another thing is take advantages of the high rises. Scorpions, they can die fairly easily. They do a lot of damage and they can die fairly easily. Things like scorpions, Kodiaks, locusts, especially the blood fuel, bloodlust locusts, they're great. They're one of my favorite units. Chuck them up on the ledge. It's so hard to kill. And yeah. Um, so Kodiaks, uh, Wolverines, Cyclopses, locusts, scorpions, uh, reavers. I think I said reavers or not. I'm not sure. Um, sniper units as well as like ranger units depending on if you're using banished or usc uh, wraiths unless you have like an ironclad wraith that's better off down in the bottom because that takes a lot of damage but it's also good up top in case they decide to take out your um, ledge area 
while they're taking out the main area. Uh, so it depends on really what you go there. I tend to have armored marines up on the ledge with ironclads down into this into the section. If it's just normal wraith, I'll have it up on the ledge, perfectly fine. Um, those sort of things. Take advantage of the ledges, especially down at sea. You can even do that at sea. Um, you kind of put them over to the side where you've spawned. So instead of the putting just right in the center, if you've spawned over the right side, you kind of have them chilling over this part here instead of over in the center of the ledge. So you can still look at sea and overlook sea, but it just attacks everything there. Another t another trick for if you're trying to take B, um, and you have a blister back in your class, put it down at the bottom of C, right on where the the ledge is. Um, so not on the ledge, but just in front of the ledge. If they if they're too busy paying attention to their B section to fight back, and you have a blister back there, it's going to take out almost everything on that ledge as easy as shit. They're not going to know what's hit them. It's just going to happen all of a sudden, and they're going to freak out, thinking, "Holy crap! I've just lost a shit ton of units. I'm losing. I'm losing. I need to withdraw. Otherwise, I'm going to have everything gone right now." Um, having that happen, you take out a lot of those units there. Another great spot to put the blister backs is closer to the side that you spawn, but in between A and B. Right in that little cavern area where it goes down like that and straight down to B and then over up to the side, more towards the side that you spawn, whether you're on red or blue team. Having them sit right there, one, two, heck, even three. Matt's even used four, which is awesome because they just destroy everything. Just having them there because they attack A really well and they destroy it B because they see B easier than A. But it works really well with keeping an area. After a while, all I need to do is have some Cyclopses up at A, Wolverines sitting in the middle, maybe two Wolverines in the middle, a Nightingale, as well as, um, say, some Marine, Armored Marines, and fucking just something big sitting there. Not, not like a Banshee or anything like that. It's good to have a Banshee or a Hornet sitting there. Yeah, so it's best to have... Um, just something big in there with the Wolverines and your Cyclops. The Cyclops will help take out stuff like your the tanks that might come in. Uh, the Wolverines will help take out those air units straight away, especially Nightingales, because they're hard to get rid of. They have a lot of health. Um, and then, obviously, your Armored Marines, uh, a tank or a Spartan, they'll stop anything that tries to attack. I'd prefer to have the Spartan in where the main battle is, not just a defending unit. Um, and then, once you've had that set up, they don't tend to attack A anymore, because they'd rather have C... And it not be contested than have an A contested where someone's obviously dedicated at having that spot. There's a lot more energy spawns up at A. That's definitely one thing you do need to make sure of. You take those three energy spawn spots and keep them down in the jaws. You will have unlimited energy consistently. At one point, I had 50 energy drops taken in the game. I think I missed one or two of them. That's why I was only 50. Um... But then in saying that, once that's been held down, I tend to just go straight down to B and spawn stuff at B, especially on the ledge. Matt tends to keep down the center part, and I put in ledge work. I put in more Cyclopses, I put in more Wolverines and Locusts, if I have them there. And then I spawn in specialties, like Arc Defenses, Spawners, um, like Arc Defenses, Spawners, uh, Nightingales, to just keep his units healed as much as possible um if i ever get another spartan i put in another spartan i drop a super unit if i have a super unit. i never really use super units they're not really worth it in my eyes they're easily counteractable depending on how you use it it's hard to use them properly um they're good at first if you have two people that are really working together i think it happened to us once someone had two scarab units in their hand as well as another one had another one in their hand they spawned one had it walk across from c to b then as that was just about to die, they spawned uh, one off to the right side of B and had it walk in. Then as that one died, they have another one walk in at the same spot from C going to B. And it was a dick of a thing to try and handle. It was so hard to deal with. I could not believe my eyes when I was like, there's a fucking third? There's a second? Fuck off! It's annoying. Use your ledges to your advantages. They're good. If you have a cloaked Kodiak, make sure you use that. He's only for Cutter, I believe. So if you really want to have a cloaked Kodiak, you're going to have to use Cutter. Um, again, you have to get it from a drop. They're really worth using. They're hard to kill. And if you know how to use Cutter properly in other ways as well, he's definitely one of your best shots at, uh, at winning. Um, I don't have a lot for Cutter, so I don't tend to use him just as yet. I do have the cloaked Kodiak, and that's something that makes me want to use him more. 
but I don't have enough for him that makes me want to feel comfortable using him. I'm, I'm happy with what I have with Anders, and I'm happy with what I have with Atriox to be able to play. Shipmaster is the elite. He has the elite honor guard special ability. He drops straight down, ignores adrenaline um, um, nerfs, is cloaked for the first 90 seconds, incredibly hard to kill, does a fuck ton of damage. He's only 190, and he does a, a, just an insane amount of damage. If you drop it right in the center of where they're trying to keep themselves, do that. Hard to kill. Hard to kill. Hard to kill. Especially if they don't have a Nightingale or an Engineer. Um, he tends to stick more to be your basic uh, Banish leader, kind of like what Cutter is, your basic UNSC leader. Atriox is, is a lot of stuns, uh, immobilizers, stuff like that. Uh, Decimus is a lot of draining abilities, like vampire abilities. He starts off with bloodlust uh, grunts, uh, blood fuel grunts. Uh, has a lot of uh, vampire specials like the 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 siphon field. It essentially just takes away your enemy's health, any enemy that's in that circle, and then gives it to your troops. Um, it's quite good. It's very handy. The, uh, Atriox and Decimus both have brute super units. I haven't used them, so I don't know what they are really, to be honest. My favorite units in the whole game, top five favorite units. Wolverines. Wolverines have always been my favorite unit, no matter what Halo it is. Then it's definitely a blood fuel locust because they regain their health the more damage they do. So you just have them up on a ledge, have two or three of them, especially just destroying everything, and it's so good to see when it happens. Um, then obviously my Cyclopses. I love my Cyclopses so much. The Nightingales, and then probably last um, would have to be. Blisterbacks. Blisterbacks would, would have to be my fifth favorite because they're just so versatile as well as all the other ones I've just said. You put them up on a ledge. All of them, all of these guys are basic basic ledge work and Nightingales are just heal work. Um, I, I'm more of a support player for the person who's taking the areas, but I tend to have that support. So I do a lot of damage to them. I may not finish them off, but I do a lot of damage to let Matt kill them off. Um, I keep one section completely down as much as possible. I may have, let them have it at the very first couple like minute or so, but then I take it back almost instantly once I gain ground. Uh, if I need, Matt will come give me help, but that's about it. I want to play 3v3. I want to I want to find one of my other friends that are willing to play so I can record that and play that before the game comes out. It comes out real, real soon, sometime in February, so get keen for that. Once I do get it, I'll be playing the campaign through with Matt and recording that all for you guys, um, but I'm going to be getting back to everything right now. I've taken enough time out to just record this itself. So thank you guys so much for watching, like and subscribe. If you have any more questions about what's happening in Halo Wars Blitz, leave it down below. Anything on game mechanics or how it all works, leave it down below. And thank you guys so much for watching, like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video. Here we go. Not all men. One of the most annoying phrases someone can say. Not because I'm guys I knew it was Billy. I fucking knew it was Billy. Bullshit, her name was fucking me. It's gotta be a bit more controversial. If you are watching this video,